one of the reasons why the questions asked in this year's examination can be said to be by and large having a scholarly approach can be said to be having a scholarly and academic approach is because of this question that is land use land cover and soil types influence the forage quality and quantity in semi arid regions of the world discuss with relevant examples now to be very honest and to be uh, very straightforward there was no business for this type of a question to be asked in a civil services uh, examination largely because uh, uh, of course there is a reason for this topic to be asked in the region uh, but then it's too scholarly too academic uh, to be of a uh, real significance in this region and if it is that anyone has to generalize out of only this question uh, then can you imagine what will be the generalization the generalization will be that in order to prepare for civil services examination one has to go through all the journals and all the type of articles that been published in a international journals and that is simply not possible of course you don't have to go through conventional books but you don't have to go through such type of journals because there is a limit up to how much how many journals that you can actually go on to take a look at i'll go on to begin by talking about what has been the context of this question being asked here. the basic context has been that there was a, a seminar that took place that was conducted in kampala in uganda and that seminar was in the name of this paper was uh, land use and land cover and how did that determine soil types and how and soil types along with soil types uh, it determines the forage quality and the quantity in the semi arid regions of the world now that is what exactly it was looking for and when it was looking for in such a manner then uh, unless you have read through this article you can go to manufacture this answer uh, it is difficult to manufacture this answer largely because uh, it is too technical in nature and uh, that went to form the basis for this question being asked uh, but supposing uh, that you have been able to answer this question then of course it is going to be mark switching all in all anyone who can go to have a very good command over the section of the first paper this year only this section would have given them something like some 80% marks all in all so that even though they may not have fared so well in the second section of it things would have been very very easy all in all so smart switching and it the approach is that you will require an scholarly approach in this case of course the problem being faced by the candidate is that we are going to be talking about comprehension of the topic here or not only topic material as well in this case here that's where it is going to be difficult so it is going to be found in only some places some books all in all where it is going to be generally available we go on to begin with we will go on to begin with discussing about what exactly is forage now forage is a plant material mainly plant leaves and stems eaten by grazing livestock it is also used more loosely to include similar plants cut for fodder and carried to the animals especially uh, in some places like in britain it is going to be called as a hay or silage as well the term forage crop is uh, used to define crops which can be both annual or biennial and which are grown to be utilized by grazing or harvested as a whole crop now this is why it goes on to include edible parts of the plants rather than separated grains that can provide feed for grazing animals and that can be harvested for feeding therefore we are going to be talking about it includes edible parts of the plants rather than all those that are going to be separated in one way or the other so which can be harvested and therefore it going to include uh, browse herbage and a mast all of them the quality of the forage that we said what exactly goes on to determine the quality of the forage is a uh, first is its digestibility now digestibility means uh, the animals may go to eat it uh, if it is not going to be digestible of course that is going to harm the health of the animals uh. second is the nutrition status of the forage crops now nutrition status depends on uh, what is uh, found in the forage crops for example 
Is it that there is a concentration of and ratio of carbohydrates, proteins and lipids or is it going to be something else? Thus nutrition status of the forage crops. Then palatability, palatability that means the test of it. For example, you will understand it. There is the some time back all the crops that used to be produced in Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh that used to be used for the purpose of feeding it to the cattle and that is where we used to be talking about the palatability of it because they were very very tasty. Now these things are not tasty at all. Consequently the farmers think of burning these crops and that is why the problem of a stubble burning takes place. So that is going to palatability. Then we are talking about its protein content and protein amount, high amount of protein compound, healthy, it is going to be more healthy for the animals. And then nitrogen availability, which is going to be predominantly from forest plants and it is estimated to be using crude total protein measurements in this place also. Plus lipids, we are going to be talking about trace elements here as well. And these trace elements are significant because if they're going to be having good amount of uh, certain things uh, like uh, like zinc, uh, then that goes on to provide a good amount of immunity to the uh, plants. Uh. Lipids are going to be significant because uh, lipid in a forage crop uh, are mostly found as polyunsaturated fatty acids. Uh. That is going to be in the range of something like some 10 to 30 gram per kilogram. Of which the most important is uh, the alpha lenic acid. I mean, this is almost uh, 62 percent of the total lipids uh, with uh, linolenic and uh, palmitic acid uh, that is also being present. Uh, and these dietary lipids uh, are important in final animal product quality. Forage diets with a lower PUFA, that is a uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, uh, then cereal diets can go on to produce leaner wheats. Uh, so good quality of forage is uh, significant uh, because uh, that can go on to lead to the evolution of a high amount of home meat rather than leaner meat. Uh. And then trace elements. Uh. By trace elements, we mean minerals and trace elements uh, from forages uh, are important for maintaining livestock health. Uh. As there is a move towards using fewer antibiotics in animal production, the nutritional balance and feed uh, takes uh, an additional importance in this case. Uh. Biomass production is going to be the other part and that is going to be the most important trade of any forage crop is rapid biomass production because uh, the crops are either cut or grazed uh, directly and nutritional quality depends on the rate of the biomass uh, production. So having known about it, this goes on to determine the quality of it, uh, you are uh, to know that is uh, uh, what exactly is going to be the important characteristic of the forage. Uh, and how it is going to be determined. That means the important characteristic forage is going to be it must going to have a short growing period, not long growing period, and it must be grown in closer spacing with high seeds, not far off because it is going to take a consume a lot of land in this case. It is grown in closer spacing with high seed rate as well, and of course it is in dense stage to smaller weeds. Otherwise, if it is not going to be in dense stance then weeds will go to find their way in this case eh? and of course eh, it can go to prevent soil erosion. Uh, improved soil health, it must be in a position to improve the soil health eh, by addition of higher amount of eh, organic residues in the, the soil. So what exactly is going to be the role of land use and land cover in this case? Eh? Now when we are talking about land use and land cover in, in these regions, eh, then that goes on to be having a meaning. Eh? We are talking about uh, that is land use cover changes have significant influence on the physical and chemical properties leading to that may be leading to land degradation. Now research and soil properties uh, have conveyed uh, that changes in the land use cover management is critical to understanding uh, the land degradation process, uh, sustainable use uh, and resource dynamics in semi-arid areas. Uh. Semi-arid resource dynamics in particular forage and water are critical in sustaining pastoral and agro-pastoral livelihoods uh, as they directly influence livestock production which is a key to food security holding. Now legumes uh, have been observed to grow in uh, sandy to clay soils with a better performance in medium texture soil and in contrast uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium uh, 
and of course soil ph was identified as a some of these important tech components as part of the forager production but then we are going to be talking about the role of land use and land cover and high persistence in regeneration capacity that reduces the need for frequent sowing and it's a tillage that is going to be one of these components this is one part associated with it the second part is associated with the crop management differs with the purpose of growing forage and the mode of their utilization wider adaptability that is part of land use in this case wider adaptability capacity to grow under stress condition that is determined again by the land use conditions here high nutrient and water requirement high water requirement eh, under intensive cropping so is it that we have to go for an intensive land use or is it that we have to go for an extensive land use in this case that is again determined by the land use and then multi cut nature with capacity to provide a regular income and employment to the people this must go on to be the basic aim of land use in this case having been talked about that part the role of soil types is going to be equally significant of course we are going to be talking about two aspects of it one was associated with the land use and other was the soil type now soil properties uh, contribute to the widely recognized resilience of uh, semi arid rangelands uh, because they provide a degree of suppleness that prevents uh, any shift in ecological competitive dominance uh, a soil of ph something like a uh, 7.5 to 8.5 supports good growth uh, as uh, the crop is grown under rain fed condition that means under dry land condition and it is important the soil must have a good hold, water holding capacity with a proper drainage system to avoid water logging conditions seed rate and sowing time is going to be about 50 to 60 k kg of seed would be needed to sow 1 hectare in this case then having uh, talked about all of these aspects you go on to be talking about soil properties and land cover types so both of them is and we have talked about the ph value they jointly determine what exactly is going to be the type of forage that you going to find in this place now this is something that is going to be easily seen in some places like let's say uh, trans mexican region trans mexican volcanic region and in which soil properties such as organic matter and interchangeable phosphorus and availability of a potassium shows degradation tendency and consequently that has determined the forage quality in this region then change in the land cover has led to the degradation in the dadarif region in sudan the whole of this region the that goes on to show this part and most of this uh, a study has been done in the semi arid region particularly in the sahel region uh, and uh, in the sahel region uh, it is a deliberate ploy to use a land use cover for the purpose of determining uh, forage uh, largely because uh, this is the place where the people go to earn their livelihood uh, from uh, only animals uh. there has been a positive relationship between increased nitrogen and uh, above ground forage quantity and that is going to be found in africa and that is where most of this uh, studies has been actually done as well so there is in very short there are certain properties of forage that is digestibility palatability nutrient and then other things uh, plus trace elements and nitrogen now the quality of the forage is going to be determined by soil with a specific type of ph value the quality of the forage is going to determine by the land use the land use that will going to mean whether it is going in semi arid is will going to mean whether they are being grown close together whether they are going to be done in the form of a very professional management whether a lot of water is being used whether water is not going to be used in this place how what is the spacing of these crops that will going to become land use to have more such discussions and analysis subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications on our upcoming videos